we are becoming individual sensors. We are creating this huge sensor network of people holding these mobile devices. And that information is two-way. It's not just passive collection, listen to your GPS technology, tell you where, how to get to someplace. You're going to say, wait a minute, I see a problem. I want to report that problem. I want to see that someone's going to respond to that. We were playing basketball. We see like the ground keep on moving. I see a lot of people, some of them dying like uh, the ceiling, like kill them. I have uh, both extended uh, family members and close family members who live in Haiti. And the first reaction was more like surreal. Is this really happening? We needed to know where we could go in. And so we used geospatial technology to prepare the area with information before we even got there. Approximately two-thirds of the cell towers stayed active, and aid workers and Haitian nationals were posting information saying that they needed help. I was watching CNN and immediately called our Ushahidi tech lead in Atlanta. I told him that we really need to move and set up an Ushahidi platform for Haiti. Ushahidi is an open source platform for crowdsourcing crisis information. Basically that means you are following local media, Twitter, Facebook, text messages, any source of information you can get. Once you aggregate this information, you map it. You have a real-time picture of the actual situation on the ground. This information can be used by rescue workers or anyone. With an Ushahidi platform, you can decide what kind of map you want to use. OpenStreetMap uses crowdsourcing to do street mapping. And within a few days, OpenStreetMap had the most detailed map of Haiti that was available. There were maps of Haiti before the earthquake but they just weren't up to date anymore. So people started using donated satellite imagery to trace an open street map, collapsed buildings, clinics, hospitals. Within a week or so, we had trained over 100 individuals at Tufts University to map the incidents and the alerts. And then a, a text number 4636 was set up for reporting. But these text messages were all going to be in Creole. So we started getting as many Creole speaking volunteers as possible. I found out about the 4636 effort through a friend of mine. So I got online, started getting involved, basically staying up late after putting the kids to bed, try to translate as many text messages as I could. Our top priority is for Prince. It's good, it's got translations. There was this energy. Today's. Mass. People from basically all over the world created sort of like support system over the internet. A soccer stadium was serving as a camp for displaced persons. But we didn't know it was there. Through Yushahidi's mapping ability, we knew that that would be a location to take aid. We wouldn't have seen it without them. Yushahidi alerted the world that if you've got needs in Haiti, or you're trapped in a building, or you're out of food, or you're injured and you need help, that you can alert us. Whether you are that person in Des Moines, Iowa, who's reading Twitter or Facebook, or you're a Haitian on the ground, with mobile technology and open sourcing information, you're suddenly empowered. I was by California. Being able to stay online, translating those text messages. You know that that information will be forwarded directly to a specific aid organization. That made it feel like almost I was on the ground uh, helping. <laughs> 